Welcome back to the round table. Now, today on the show, we are focusing on surviving widowhood, as you've seen earlier from my two guests, Frida and Janet. Really, there is a sisterhood amongst widows. Now, my next two guests will be sharing with us how they have taken their personal experience and are helping other women within the community. We have with us Mili Atieno, Mili Karibu Kwenye Round Table, and Gladys Sanya. So, Mili, you've been a widow for 20 years. Roughly 20 roughly 20 years mm -hmm. and Gladys 12 years yeah. so let me start with you Mili 20 years because you're 40 now so you were widowed at almost in your early 20s yeah. probably tell us I, about I that I was young you're very young yeah, I was a young girl wow by then uh, okay I'm a mother of two mm -hmm. my first one is 23 years then my second was 19 years you look at me when you're talking yeah my second one is 19 years this widowed journey has not been very easy, especially to me coming from those sides of Nyanza. Mm -hmm. But through the help of God, eh, I overcome it. And I'm now proud to be called a widow. That's why I am where I am today. And uh, when you say you were married young, how old were you when you got married? I was almost uh, 19. 19 years. Yes. And by the time your husband was passing on, how old were the kids? Oh, my first born was five years old, then my second born was uh, almost uh, one year. And so once now your husband passed on, can we ask perhaps how he passed on? Yeah, oh, okay. My husband uh, was complaining about the headache. So we thought that uh, the, uh, his lenses was, uh, was not good. So we went ahead to the hospital, changed the lenses. Still the guy was still complaining of the headache. It was uh, for the, about three months, the man was no more. So I didn't understand it very well. And at the time, were you living uh, out of Nairobi? Yeah, we were in Nairobi. You were in Nairobi yes, with him? Yes, yes. So once he passed on, how, uh, who was there to support you? Was his family supportive? Was your family yeah, supportive? Yeah, the relatives were there. My sister-in-law was there. The brother-in-law was there. And also my sister. So yours is a bit different in that at least they were good to you. Yeah, they were good to me. Though later, later on, they didn't help me, but I managed to educate my children. Okay. Yeah. And what about you, Gladys? How did your husband pass on? Well, my husband got sick for just a few weeks, and he passed on. It was just natural causes. And for you as a young widow, what were your challenges that you had to go through? Well, it was really traumatic because... This man was my best friend. He was my mentor. I looked at him, other than just being my lover, my husband, he was kind of a father to me. When I fell in love with him, with him, I looked at him as a father figure. This man loved me. This, one was, this man cared for me. He mentored me. In that community where I, I got married, that is my community where I come from, from the Nyanza regions, there, there is some way women are taken. Women are taken as if they are family property, mm -hmm. they are clan property. So, but when I came into this family, this man protected me through all those, in, those, in, the, in all those areas. He, he was protective of me, he loved me, despite so many challenges, he was being told that this girl you are married to, this girl, uyu ni mstana wa town, eh, uyu ni, we, we don't even understand this girl properly, but he loved me and he protected me. Mm. So, so his, his death hit So his hard. death hit me hard. I didn't have anyone to look, to look, to look up to. In his family, he was even he was the only a kind of some source of income to even his family. He was the breadwinner. All yes, round. he won the yes he was the breadwinner all round. And how many kids did you have at the point when he passed away? I had four four kids, three sons, one girl. The firstborn by then was was around seventeen years because he was in form three. The second one was. Had just taken his exams for his class eight exams. 
he was going he was supposed to go to form one and then the third one was a very small guy by that time he was two and a half years and the fourth one the girl was even almost a year and how did it affect your kids because as a wife you've shared with us the impact and the vacuum yes. that the loss of your spouse had on you what about for your children it really affected them because for these younger these older guys who were boys because they were older that enough. yes they were they were that in that age now where these guys they are they were adults the adolescents and teenage they were in teenagehood that is the time the children need their father most they were looking up to him as, a, the, as their role model and as a father figure these younger ones also they were very young in fact i even tell them about their father now they just hear that mm. they had a father they, they don't even they were very young they didn't even understand mm. yes and do you feel that maybe having gone through this loss of a father impacted your kids? And has it shown up in their lives in any way or form? Yes, it has really shown up. They reached a point when, where they kind of had some rebellion. Mm -hmm. You know, as, a, as an only parent, and especially a mother, raising up young guys, young men. Young men. So hard. Yeah. It's really complicated. And you know now, in this family where we, my, okay, my children, when, we, they, were, when they were growing up, we, the, the other family, the father's family, was closer than mine. So in fact, these children, Walizoea Sana, the other side of the father's side. And this is the father's side, they are the ones who reject, rejected us. Now, Baba Yao Amekufa, they didn't want anything Baba Yao Amekufa, Hii family at aitaki kutuona, wanataka hata kutunyanganya the small house hile tuliachu andani because that was the only property I can imagine that was left to us. They didn't want to see us. You know, most of the times when you see ukiona hawa watu, widows wanapigwa vita. Sometimes this guy, wana, these guys, sometimes hata hakuna kitu ya maana hile wanapigwa. Yeah. Wale wanaangalia mbaka ile kale kashamba, they inherited shamba there at home. So they want to make sure that they clear this family wa waondwe so that wachukue mbaka kale kashamba wakunaye pale nyumbani. So these my in-laws, they were not even looking at the children. They were selfish. Leave alone me, they were selfish. Yeah. Leave alone just me, they were not even looking at these children. They didn't want anything to do with us. So they just wanted to do away with us completely so that maybe they start from that small shamba there at home, Ushago, and then maybe t they come to Nairobi here, where Pale Mali to Kuna Kale Kanyumba, so that Wapati na Fasia Kufanya. But you were yeah. able to keep your house? I was able to keep my house, and I, I can tell you, Tamima, I'm a strong woman, mm. and that one, I can tell you, it is because of that man the father of my children mm. because he mentored me and most of the times you have to be strong you have to do this you have to forge ahead you have to do this and this and it sounds to so, me like your husband had foresight yes. because he must have left his affairs in order yeah he had left his affairs in order that one i can say everything was in order on his part so because because he knew his family he knew his family, yes. Mm. He knew his family. And mm. I really hope that uh, if you're you know, a couple and you're a man, you're watching, because these are realities that happen so often in our society. Mm. So if you can, protect your wife, protect your kids. So if you're not going to be here, you know, because you're ten mungu, make sure you have a will, you have written down, this goes to this person, just to make sure that your widows are not left to be victims at the, at the hands of, you know, selfish, selfish relatives. Now, Millie, you're saying yours was a bit different because you mentioned that you were widowed very young. Yes. 